Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking the wooden floor material that we made in the last video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived in feel. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the files we'll be needing during this video. We're going to need the floor smudges type A medium 001 overlay texture, which is a bit of a mouthful, and also the gun scratches 0031. Uh, both of those I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll be including a link to them below the video. Right, let's head over to Maya. Okay, so this is our scene from last time. Hopefully it's a ringing a bell. Um, if you'll remember, we brought in these nodes via our material converter. It did all the work for us, brought in the textures, um, and all we did was slightly affect the, uh, the gloss map. Um, giving us a little bit more control over its effect on our final material. Um, we did that by first converting it into a roughness map, then using a multiply uh, operator on that roughness map, and then converting it back into a gloss map and then feeding it into the shader. Now if I play uh, press the play button here and start up the interactive render, give it a moment, and that will let us see what we're doing as we start working. Good, that's working. Right. Before we actually get stuck like down to business and, and get working with the nodes though, I do want to just go over exactly what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, that'll, that'll be the reflections will be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so let's get to work on our nodes. It's going to be this roughness map um, that we get to work on first and what we need to do is bring in our smudges texture so I'll hit the file node here this gives us two nodes in fact one for the image texture and one for placement and then I'm going to load in our smudges texture now there's a few different options with the smudges um, I'm going to use the 16 bit one there uh, that a 16-bit image has more color depth and you just get more detail out of the texture which is what we want so let's load that in I'm also going to change this color space now as a general rule if a texture affects the color of a material such as obviously the color texture but also reflection um, you would leave this at sRGB which means basically when V-Ray is rendering any gamma corrections that are being applied will be applied to those textures, yeah? Any color corrections and, and, and whatnot. For textures that don't affect color, like gloss, displacements, normal maps, etc., you do not want the gamma corrections and color corrections to be applied. You want the raw data from those textures. So we're going to change that to raw, like so. Now what we need to do is figure out a way to take our smudges texture, which I'll give a name while I think about it, and well, that's not right. Let's try that again. Smudges. I don't know why it's decided to use that name. Oh well. It still says the word smudges in it. That's a that's a start at least. Um, but yeah, we need to figure out a way to take this smudges texture and get it to affect our gloss map. Or more accurately, we're going to get it to affect our roughness map, which is what it is between these two nodes. Yeah. So I'm going to create a little bit more room like so uh, and it's this gap here where we're going to introduce our smudges so let's do that now we're going to use a composite now you have a couple of composite options here color and float now I didn't actually mean to click on them but hey <laughs> as I explained in the, in the last video some of the inputs in the shader require a full color image others want a grayscale one i.e. a float value now we're currently working in float. If you remember, I just took the red channel uh, from our gloss map and then 
fed it into the red channel of this one and etc etc so we're just working with the one channel of our color map so it's a float composite that we need not a color one so we'll get rid of that and I'm going to call this float composite smudges add because this is where we're adding in our smudges and now let's just connect it up so we want the output X from the roughness adjust and then the out of the output of the, the uh, composite node into the input X of no, input X of <laughs> our roughness to gloss. Now, you'll notice our gloss map is obviously completely gone now, um, and that's fine for now anyway. <laughs> now we're going to take the red channel, which is a float value, um, from our overlay texture and feed that into float B. And you'll see our gloss map starts to come back, and you can actually see the smudges coming in, but this isn't the... Uh, the operator that we want. It's currently on add. Now even though in terms of when you're looking at a picture naught is black, white is one, the numbers can actually go beyond that. You wouldn't physically see it with your with your eyes but the the the, the, the renderer certainly will. Um, so if we had a really bright value and then try to add our smudges on top of that we'd have a value higher than one and we don't want that. So what we want to do is change this to screen. Now, what a screen operation does is basically, it's like a multiply, except it inverts the result uh, before and after the multiply operation, yeah? Um, which is possibly a bit more detail than I really need to go into, so let's just ignore that. <laughs> what, uh, in, in real terms, it gives us a way of adding the brighter areas from our floor smudges to our roughness map without exceeding that maximum one yeah um, it, it's, it's the it's, it's the best way to do it so now we've got that set to screen that's all working correctly and you can see our floor smudges are looking pretty good one thing that's a little bit off though is the scaling um, if you notice say around here that's a footprint that would be some pretty tiny feet compared to the size of these floorboards so let's go to the UV um, node here for our smudges texture and we've got some repeat UV values here which is where we can change the scaling essentially we'll just move that back up there um, now we want these smudges to be bigger which means we need to make the repeat smaller so let's go for a value of about 0 0.6 maybe 0 0.65 something like that give it a sec to refresh and that should be a bit more what we're, what we're looking for here yeah. Yeah, that looks, I could just do that tell that's going to be fine. So we'll leave that as is. We do need one other node for our smudges though, and that's some control. We, we, we currently have no control over the amount that the smudges map is influencing our roughness map. Yeah. So much like we did with the roughness adjust, we used a multiply divide node. I'm going to use that again. Uh, there it is. I'll place that in roughly the same place below the other one. And we'll name this one Smudges Adjust. Now, this uses full color values, not a float, so I'm going to have to expand the inputs again so we can just use that first X input and output. And I'll take the red channel from our smudges, put it into the input X, and then the output X into float B. We won't see any changes, but that's fine but it gives us again this value that we can now change to multiply the smudges texture. So if I lower this to say zero, it's multiplying our smudges uh, texture by zero, uh, which of course gives us an answer of zero, i.e. black, i.e. no effect whatsoever, and our smudges completely disappear. At one, it will be the full effect of it, um, which isn't what we want. As we just said, that's too strong. So, we're going to lower this to about, a, I don't know, about a 0.5 will be a good place for now. What you've got to remember with these smudges is that it's supposed to be a really subtle effect. We don't want our floor to look dirty and unclean. We just don't want it to look absolutely perfect because things in the real world aren't perfect. Yeah, they're imperfect, <laughs> hence surface imperfections. So th this this subtle effect gives that gives that kind of impression, um, but we, you've got to be careful not to go overboard with it. And I think that value of about 0.5 should be about right. Uh, obviously we'll need to wait until the final render to see. Anyway, 
With that said, I'd say our smudges are about done, and the next thing we need to do is add in our uh, scratches. Okay, so adding scratches or adding additional bump information uh, in Maya when you're using V-Ray is a little bit uh, strange, <laughs> in, in my opinion, but uh, anyway, I'll show you the best way to do it. Let's uh, make a little bit of room here after our existing uh, shader setup here. Um, and instead, we're going to bring in, or as well as, we're going to bring in a V-Ray bump material. Okay, now this essentially creates a new material. You see it's been uh, put in there. Um, and we'll actually leave that in place. I mean, you, you could just connect it directly into the surface shader there. I'm just gonna keep them separate in case we go wrong somewhere. And instead, this bump material I'll now assign to our floor plane. And you'll see it's, it's disappeared there because nothing, none of these nodes are now connected to the output. So let's fix that and feed in our current shader. Ooh. If I go to other and then out color and then drag that into the base material. Give it a sec to catch up. And now we're we're back exactly where we were. Yeah. But this new material now gives us all the these uh, inputs to affect bump mapping. So with that in place, we can now get to work on our scratches. So we'll bring in another file. I'll just move that up here a little bit. We'll call this scratches so we know what we're doing. And load up the scratches file. Now the one you'll need, um, or the one I'm going to use, sorry, is the same as the last time, the 16-bit overlay texture. There we go. And now we can feed the color from that into the bump map input of this new bump material. Or we can in theory, if it lets us. There we go. And you'll straight away see some really, really ugly scratches <laughs> appearing on our floor, which is fine. At least we know it's working. Um, the two things we have to fix here, well, th uh, three, I suppose. One is the scaling, because the scaling is completely off. Um, also, the strength, it's way too strong, but also the direction. I don't know if you can really tell here, but if you look closely at these uh, scratches, they're they're bumping out of the floor rather than, rather than cutting in. Uh, so we, we need to reverse that. So let's sort out the scaling first. I'm going to click on this UV uh, node that's connected to our scratches and change the repeat to something about five. That will give us way more scratches, but they'll also be smaller uh, and a bit more realistic compared to the size of our floorboards there. So that's one problem fixed. Next one is the direction. So you've got this bump multiplier here. Okay, I'm going to change that to negative one. And that fixes our second problem. The scratches are now cutting into the floor rather than bumping out of them. And the final thing to fix is the strength. And that's, again, this bump multiply, you just change it to a different value. So I'm gonna go for negative 0 0.05. That's probably still a little bit too strong. Hard to tell until we do an actual final render though, which is what we're going to do now because we are done with the nodes, I think. So let's close down the uh, the hypershade for a sec and open up the settings, stop this interactive render. And now I'm gonna change my resolution up to 1080p. And if I can find it, there we go. Um, and I'm gonna run a final render and uh, pause the recording while I do so. Okay, so we have our, our finished render. Um, yeah, some adjustments to be made. <laughs> the uh, the smudges are actually looking about right. Um, I might just slightly, very slightly up the strength of those. Uh, the scratches are well too strong still. Um, so we, we want to bring down that value uh, quite a bit further. Um, the so much so it's actually causing a bit of discoloration in the scratches. You can see they're looking a little bit on the on the white side there. But as you continue to bring down the the, the scratches, that will uh, that will fix itself. Um, but for the purpose of a tutorial, I think we've done an okay job. So in summary, we've taken our material from the previous video and added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic lived-in feel.